Hello, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, today I uh, would like to talk uh, about. จะทำยังไงให้เราสามารถพูดพรีเซนต์เป็นภาษาอังกฤษได้โดดเด่นมั่นใจเป็นมืออาชีพ I could say that this is a nitty gritty, you know, the main subject, the main topic of this course because it's really extremely important in how you craft your message, how you capture your audience attention, and every other techniques that we are going to look at throughout this course. Um, and I think it affects a lot of things. It affects how how you give a speech, how you get the response, and everything. So we are going to take a look at this. So three things today, three main things today is about first your strength. Yeah. <laughs> so your strain is actually more about like what you have to offer your value, right? So make sure that you demonstrate your qualities, your value conspicuous to demonstrate it clearly, <laughs> conspicuously, so that it sounds fancy. <laughs> demonstrate it clearly. You want to make sure that in every stage, people know exactly that you're. Of what what kind of value they're gonna get, what you have to offer. But of course, if you have all the value in the world, but then your audience kind of like, ah, I'm not interested in that. Or it can be, you know, as the quote say, Theodore Roosevelt once say, people want, uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Ah! <laughs> I'm quoting Theodore Roosevelt now. <laughs> yeah. So it's true. It still holds true, even for public speaking and presentation, because you need to really know exactly what your audience is like, what they want from you, to be able to give them exactly what they want, so that you can perfect that speech. This video lesson is about. I think we need to first talk and understand and make sure we have the same concept. We share the same picture of what a great content, or at least a good content, looks like. So, um, first of all, let's talk. You and me. Let's talk first. For you, what do you think are what do you think is your desired response? What do you want to get out of this presentation? Mm. Um, is it when do you feel satisfied? You feel happy? You feel like yes. When your audience um, give you a round of applause, or when they're standing ovation, or when uh, people laugh at your joke, or when um, people buy your stuff, or you know give you funding, what is the goal? What is the desire? The goal response from your audience. Let's keep it like maybe like one minute or two to think about this really quickly. Okay, now so you will see that the first thing is about clarity of purpose. Clarity of purpose. So what it means is that while you are speaking from the beginning, during it until the end, was it clear enough? Is it clear enough for people to know what exactly is it about? Is the topic and the purpose? Do people understand exactly what's it about? Have you ever like? Sometimes there's gonna be some speech, right? And this is to do with organization as well. There's gonna be some speech that is like, "Wow, so good, so cool," but then you couldn't remember what what's it about. I remember some words, some ideas, but I don't know what the whole thing is about. So that clarity of purpose throughout your speech is very important. Yeah. The next thing is the organization. Yeah. Um, so you want to make sure that people follow you through ideas from one another, this one and this one and this one, and the whole thing actually supplement to the whole topic and purpose of this speech. Yeah. So the organization it can be better with some transitions, so that people know that oh okay now you're moving to this one. Oh okay go back a little bit. Oh okay this is the third one already. Something like that. So there's something that's called transitions and signposts. Yeah, is it coherent and cohesive? Meaning that 
the whole thing, this idea and that idea and that examples and this story actually all go together in the same way to support the topic. ไปด้วยกันไหมไปแล้วไปในทางที่ purpose ของเราไปด้วยไหมคนรู้สึกตามได้แล้วโอเคไหมคล้อยตามไหม Yeah. So these are the things that you have to really think about. And of course, we don't just let you you decide for yourself. We're gonna get through that. Yeah. We're gonna get to that um, later in this unit. And also another thing is the introduction. How do you open? How do you start this presentation? Is it something that attracts or get the attention from the audience right away, or like huh, the first ten seconds it was pretty boring? Uh, <laughs> You assess it, yeah. Do you have credibility statement? Is there any part of it that you convince the people listening to you that you know something uh, that you have value to give, um, that you are trustworthy, that people should trust you, believe you, and understand what you said, yeah. Otherwise, without these two, they might be like, oh, okay, you give a speech, I don't care. Right, so you want to get the attention and also show your credibility. Show that you are, huh, I'm pretty good at this, so you should listen to me. Something like that, yeah. And also the introduction, you need to have the topic preview as well, yeah. Topic preview is revealing what this whole thing is gonna be about. We're gonna talk about all of that later in this unit again, yeah. And Uh, logic, practicality of ideas. When you select your main ideas, um, of course, it should be something that it's it makes sense to people. Um, whether whether or not they will be like, oh, hmm, that, hmm, yeah, that makes sense. Whether or not their disposition towards you or towards the topic might be in the very beginning, but the logic and practicality of the ideas that you put in there should be something that people are like, hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. Is it there in your speech? Yeah, could they take these ideas and principle to use? Do you feel related to that? Okay. The first thing is question. Mm, to start by asking question, you can ask question in order to, you know, call for engagement. Yeah, so that people, uh, you can ask so that you get some kind of engagement. People feel like they are interacting with you. People feel like they are part of the speech. Or you can ask a question just for them to think, to get them thinking. Yeah, and people, if it's affirmative statement, เป็นประโยชน์บอกเล่าธรรมดา People probably think it's 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 like okay, I'm listening to you. Okay. But if you ask the uh, the question, if it's in the question form, people feel the need. It's and it's this is our nature. People feel the need to do something with you. Yeah. So this is to start engagement, whether verbally or inside your head. Yeah. So um, it can be a questions like uh, give me a show of hands. It can be a questions like yes or no. It can be like how many of you. It can be rhetorical question, um, or you can it can be a question like choose this or that. It can be any kind of questions. But the tip is for that that it should be something that it's either easy to answer, then you can get the response for sure, or it can be the question that actually gets them to think. But you don't need the answer. Yeah. I can't write the main ideas for you. I'm sure you know your content better than I do. That's for sure. Uh, so while helping you selecting the right main ideas, I have a little bit of tips to share with you. But of course, the process of thinking what's going to be your ideas will be your process. I'm just here, like, to give you, like, a Uh, uh, a fast start, a f easy start, uh, easy start. <laughs> I'm trying to find the right word choice. Yeah. So I think these are the kind of questions that when I first practice writing my script, um, and also what I've been taught is that the main ideas should be something like this. So I prepare a little bit of a checklist for you to put into the consideration when selecting the main ideas. 
Uh, the first thing is, of course, is your main idea serves the purpose of the speech. If it serves directly, if it's there mainly to serve the purpose, it, it should be there. If not, is it just a tiny detail? Or is it the main idea? You might want to think about that. Yeah. Uh, or maybe this is the scope of your topic. And this is related to the topic, but it doesn't really serve the purpose of the speech as much as you want to. Then maybe you might want to consider this to be in another speech to be a little bit of detail rather than the main point. Yeah. Or is this main point necessary for the audience for better understanding uh, to better understanding the topic? Does it help them if it's um, per, uh, informative speech, you are giving um, the information. There could be a lot of so many trivial details, but you need to be able to focus on the vital few. Yeah, not like, oh, wow, this speech, I have a hundred main points. I mean, it's, can you do that? Yes, but it's going to be a lot too many things for you to talk about. It's hard to focus on what arguments to develop, right? Or how does it help the audience understand the topic better? So apart from saying, yes, it helps. How? What are the things that actually fulfill the whole topic? How is it actually fulfilled? Why is it vital to be there? Yeah. Is this main point overlapping or practically the same as the other one? Um, a lot of time that I help my students to develop a script outline, uh, whether it's for speech presentation or for essay writing, what really comes in between the way of progressing in that area is usually that we find the ideas, but the ideas are very much similar to another one. So it's kind of overlapping or sometimes it's practically this one can be under this one to give more detail. So we need to be able to, you know, group together the similar ideas and provide more variation. You talk about this already. If this seems the same, you might want, want to put this under this to support this one to be more stronger point, right? And then find a more, yeah, variation, yeah? Something that differ from this one, but actually still serves the purpose. And then this one, okay? And the last one is, do I have enough evidence and details to support my main point? You can have a great idea, but um, that idea, if that doesn't have enough, if you don't have enough evidence or details or something to really support it, it's going to be just, you know, a statement rather than a great idea, right? So you can say one thing about it, two sentences, and that's it. And we don't want that. We want your arguments, your ideas to be strongly supported, right? So that people buy it. Yeah. Sometimes they forget that what leaves a great impression, whether or not your audience leaves this room, this conference, this video conferencing or webinar, feeling like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty good presentation. Or like, man, I don't know, I don't know. It's actually with the ending, the conclusion itself, right? So um, whether or not this is like a, another decisive moment. <laughs> um, but of course it goes without saying, you already know this as you click this video that it's very important, um, no less important than other parts of the speech, right? And there's a good reason for that as we briefly mentioned uh, earlier in this unit already that we talked about cereal. I mean, cereal, not the eating cereal, but like the series of it, cereal position effect, right? And we talked about something that's called recency effect. Yeah. So something that just ended. Yeah. The last few items that are still in the working memory or short term memory are readily available. So after they, you end it, thank you very much. And then they're going to think and process a little bit. Is it a good one or is it a eh, one? is because of the recency effect, right? So let's see and create a captivating conclusion together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's so many ways that you can do this. Yeah. There are so many ways to end your speech or conclusion. Usually at the very start, you would want to 
summarize the whole thing, re restate the whole thing again. Because you remember, at the first few, um, the first you want to bang, this is a topic, right? So we have topic preview from the very start, from the beginning, intro. And then we go in idea, idea, detail, detail, idea, detail, detail, right? And then at the very end, because we're going to end it, we want to tell people once again, what is this all about? And these, again, I have gathered some of the phrases that I think should be helpful for you to introduce or for you to start a summary, the restatement, yeah? So yeah, you can pick, again, I'm gonna walk you through very briefly, this and this and that, what's available for you. You can go to the guidebook, choose whatever feels like, yeah, I like this, I like the gist, I like the feeling of this phrase, take it and then use in your own conclusion, yeah? So the first thing, the first part, obviously, summary and restatement. Uh, to summarize, to conclude, and then here you go. The sentence or a line or two that actually shows uh, or actually summarize. Yeah? Or in conclusion, in summary means exactly the same thing. Interchangeable in this case. Um, that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope you're a little clearer on idea number one, number two, number three, or maybe the topic as a whole. Returning to the original question, if it's like if it's a like a topic that is it like this? How to do this? How is it possible? Then you can say the whole thing, the whole topic. It's in the form of question. Returning to the original question, I suggest that we all should put more effort into blah blah blah. That would be it on. Duh, duh, duh. You can say that would be it or this would be it. Yeah, um, you can say that's it too. That's it, right? That's it. That's it for this video, right? That's it. This is it. Um, but it's a little less formal than that would be it. So that would be, that would be, this would be it. Sounds a little bit more formal. So I would suggest if it's a little bit more formal, you can use this one, yeah? That would be it on quantum physics for today. In brief, we have covered blah, blah, blah. Well, that concludes my presentation for today. We have talked about number one, number two, number three. Yeah. Show the best version of yourself through your ability to speak brilliantly. See you in the course.